And hopefully, in a couple of minutes, everybody will see what I'm looking at. We're going to look at dosage calculations today. And these labels are hard to read as is. Yes. Yes. It's just rounding. The most I'll count off is I have a point. And a lot of times on the homework, I don't. I think it was like a regular correct amount of instead of 10, I guess I should put all this instead of rounding on my street. Well, wait. Let's look at that. Go back and look at it. Because I think what you're doing, you shouldn't be rounding. Should it be? Uh-uh. Okay. Uh, they shouldn't have to be rounding. I think I might just had one conversion that had four numbers. Well, I hit the wrong button. Hang on. I go into it like I'm going to work on it. Okay. Because most of these, I've got to call the eye doctor and get in. Um, so, like the 325 milliliters to liters, that's a straight conversion. There's no decimals. There might be one if it's. I think it was maybe the teaspoon. It shouldn't be because there's five milliliters in a teaspoon. Okay. Now, if you're going um, pounds to kilograms or inches to centimeters or centimeters to inches, kilograms to pounds, there might be some rounding. Yeah. But those would be. and right. um, But the rest of them, now temperature will have a rounding and you round. The rule is to the tenth. Some people round to Yeah. I'll, I'll, if you'll hang around a few minutes after class, I'll look at it. I'll try to pull the question I'm about to explain. I don't want to pull anything up right now and look at it. Yeah, no, that's fine. Where's my camera? So save my camera down. There it is. Okay. All right. So we're looking at oil dosages. I'm going to try to zoom this in because, like I said, these are hard to read even on the worksheet because the labels are blurry. And I pulled these labels from um, the internet. Now this is not this is a new one I put up this morning. So um, if you don't have it, I mean it's on it'll be on your it'll be on modules or in the modules. But I found this one, I was trying to put some stuff up. I found this one. I thought this is what I use to teach this back in the spring. And I thought this of course back in the spring we did a lot of group work and a lot of uh, a lot of partners and can't do that this semester. So I'm trying to do it as a whole group. But we used to dimensional analysis, and we've done some dimensional analysis with the conversions. And a lot of these questions we can look at and know what our answer is going to be before we ever work it out. But that's the best way to learn dimensional analysis, so you can double check yourself. When this is asking, this is calculate one dose of the following drug. Sometimes I'll say, how much medication will you administer? But it's always going to be for one dose, okay? So we're always looking for one dose of medication. And now we may say, well, first, what is, what is one dose? And then how much are we going to give over seven days? Or how much are we going to give over the whole day, depending on the dosage? But right now, it's just we're calculating one dose. So all we have to have from our doctor's orders, and, you know, we talked about doctor's orders. We got a medication name, a dose, a route, a frequency, in our special directions. Okay. All we need to calculate 
is the medication name. Well, we don't need that to calculate, but we've got to make sure our medications match, and we need the dose. And then we look at our label, and we're looking at does the medications match, so we need the medication name, and we need the dose or the dosage uh, strength and the form. Okay, so when we set this up, our formula, formula is X, and in case we're looking for tablets, it might be milliliters. It's going to be generally one or capsules or one of the two. And it's the doctor's order. This is the best way I know to write it out. Over one, so what the doctor has ordered, times our dosage form over our dosage strength. So our dosage you know, form, in this case, is tablets, and our dosage strength is the one gram. Now, when we run into the milliliters, our supply dose and our dosage is going to, our dosage strength and form is going to be the same thing. Right, so the way I set this up, just like this, I'm looking for tablets. My doctor's orders is one gram over one, and then times my form, tablets, and I abbreviate it tab, and my dose of strength is one gram. Now, if the doctor's ordered one gram and you've got one gram per tablet, you know you're given one tablet, right? My grams are going to cancel. One times tablet is one tablet. One times one is one, so I don't have to worry about putting it over one. Okay. I want you to get in the habit of doing the dimensional analysis because when we get into chapters 13, 14, 15, and 16, and even 17 if we make it that far, then we're going to use dimensional analysis and there's a lot of steps, a lot of things we have to use it with. Okay, so questions yet? I mean, I just did one, but questions? So if we look at the order of clithromycin, 500 milligrams, so the, my order, then I've got to look, does my label match? It's Viaxin, Flimtab, and clithromycin, so it matches, right? The generic names are the same. It's tablets, and it's 250 milligrams. So then it's just X tablets, my order, the 500 milligrams, over one, my form, tablets, my strength, 250 milligrams. Make sure you put the unit of measure with your numbers because it's a double, it's a safety check really because the doctor may have ordered milligrams and the pharmacy may have sent micrograms or the doctor may have ordered milligrams and the pharmacy sent grams. So you keep those in when you go to cancel, my milligrams cancels my milligrams, so you can cancel your units. One thing I want you to get in the habit of, because the less zeros you have to put in your computer or your calculator, the better you are. If you've got a zero on bottom and a zero on top, you cancel them. Then I'm looking at just 50 over 25 tablets. Well, 50 over 25 is easy to divide, right? It's just two. So I'm going to give two tablets. You can write it out as two tab or two tablets with no S. I say tablets, but it's tablet. For some reason, they don't want it plural. You can say it plural all day long, just don't write it plural. Okay. So questions? Seem easy so far? If you just remember that formula, it is really easy. Okay. So y'all try number three. The order is uh, clonzepam, oops, 1.5 milligrams is the order. Okay, so here's your order, two milligrams. It doesn't say anywhere on the label that they're tablets, 
this kind of gives away that it's a tablet. Maybe, maybe not. This is for not for pregnant people. Maybe it was anywhere. Somewhere I got that it scored tablets and I put it up here in the supply dose. Do enough math in your head or do enough math same problems enough times you learn the answers so did we all get 0 0.75 all right here's something you have to know this is not a full tablet in order to give something that's not a full tablet tablet it must be a scored tablet okay so if I'm going to have to cut that tablet in half, or in this case, into fourths, so the patient can take three-fourths of the tablet, then you've got to know that it's scored. If it's not scored, the medication is not even, evenly distributed throughout the tablet. It's mixed with another chemical that makes it a solid. And uh, it's a non-active ingredient, but so it's not, the medication is not evenly distributed, so you can't cut it. If they're scored, then that medication is evenly distributed throughout the tablet. And so if you give one half of that tablet, then you're going to give the same amount of medication no matter what half you're using. Okay, or fourth or three-fourths or whatever. So only scored tablets can you give less than a tablet. Okay. So here's another one. The order is 0 0.05 milligrams. It's in tablets. I've got 25 micrograms, or I can use 0 0.025 milligrams. You can use whichever one you want. You're going to get the same answer if you do it correctly. All right. My thing has always been, if it orders in milligrams, I've got a supply and a strength in milligrams. I want to use that strength. Okay, but if I use the micrograms and do the conversions, I'm still going to get the same thing. These are equivalent measures. So, and I'll work it both ways. So my order is 0 0.05 milligrams over one, tablet over 25 micrograms. Okay, so do this way first. Since I'm going from milligrams to micrograms, I have to do a conversion. I know that there's one milligram is equal to a thousand micrograms. Right. So since milligrams on top, milligram goes on bottom, microgram would go to top. So then my milligrams cancel, my micrograms cancel, then I'm left with just tablet. Then I'm going to multiply the 0 0.05 times the 1,000. So remember when we're multiplying by 1,000, we move our decimal to the right, the number of zeros. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and I have to add a zero. So I'm going to have 50, and then on the bottom, 1 times 25 times 1 gives me 25 tablets. So 50 divided by 25 is 2 tablets. So I'm going to give two tablets there. Now, if you want to put the 0 0.05 times 1,000 in your calculator, I don't have a problem with it, okay? But the more of these little tricks or shortcuts, shortcuts that we've learned that we use, it makes working the problems easier, and you can do it so much faster and accurately. Okay.
So that was with micrograms. Questions? Okay. So let's look at it using the 0 0.025 milligrams. So 0 0.05 milligrams for my order. Still have my tablet, and it's over 0 0.025 milligrams. So I can cancel. Okay. Now, at this point, you can put 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.025 in your calculator, and you can be done with it. But if I don't want to do that, I need to do it in my head. Remember, the denominator always has to be a whole number. So I'm going to move my decimal one, two, three places to the right. And that gives me a 25 on the bottom. Whatever I do on the bottom, I have to do on the top. So one, two, three places on the top. I have to add a zero. So I get 50 on the top. And then once again, 50 divided by 25 is 2. And my unit is tablet. So either way I go, I'm still going to get the same amount or the right answer. Now, if I'm using both milligram, if I'm using the milligram because my order was milligram, it's quicker. That's the only difference. Fewer steps. Any questions? Y'all are too quiet. I'll stir you guys up somehow. I need to get, I can't dance. I couldn't dance if the ankle wasn't broke. Um, I started saying, I need to get up and dance a jig, but I couldn't do that if I tried. I have tried. I did, I tried when I was in high school, or when I taught high school. All right, I got to zoom out for a minute. All right, so in this order, we've got the order for nitroglycerin 0 0.6 milligrams sublingual. All right, so we need this whole thing. We don't necessarily need the stat, but, and then it says repeat five minutes with no relief from angina. Angina is just chest pains or discomfort in the chest. Uh, stat means immediately, so we need to give this medication as soon as possible. In your medication drawer or in your medication supply closet or whatever you have, you've got two different types of nitroglycerin. One is nitrostat, that's the brand name. But it has the nitroglycerin, so we know it's the same thing. And then we have nitroglycerin here. But you have to determine which one do you use. All right. There's one, well, there's one word on, or maybe two words, on each label that's going to tell me which one I need to use. Remember, this SL stands for sublingual, okay, which means you're giving it under the tongue. So you've got to check your labels. Which one has sublingual on it, the nitrostat or the nitroglycerin? The nitrostat. Because it is sublingual, that means that I'm using the nitrostat. Okay, because this nitroglycerin is extended release. That means it's going to stay in the system longer. You swallow that pill, you don't put it under the tongue. So my order is for 0 0.6 milligrams, and I'm running a tablet. 0 0.6 milligrams over 1, and I've got, in the form of tablets, i got 0 0.3 milligrams. So my milligrams cancel. I move my decimal one place to the right on bottom. I move my decimal one place to the right on top. So I have 6 divided by 3 tablets. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So you want to give 2 tablets. We're not using this one. Okay. So there's a lot more that goes, you know, to calculating or giving medications than just calculating the dosage. You've got to make sure you're using the right medication. What do you think would happen if you gave them the extended relief instead of the sublingual? Y'all are too afraid to talk. All right, sublingual, you're, it's going to be more like immediate action. When it's something that's absorbed under the tongue, it dissolves quickly. It's uh, taken into that gland and gets into your sub, uh, bloodstream quicker, which allows, with the nitroglycerin, it allows the um, arteries, you know, arteries or veins, but the blood vessels in the body will um, 
wide, wide open up. Uh, so if you've got a clogged artery or whatever, I don't exactly, medicine's not my forte, but I've got enough people in my family that has taken nitroglycerin. I have taken nitroglycerin, but I know a little bit about what it does. But it opens the blood vessels up in the body and allows the blood to flow more freely. So if you're having a heart attack, you want to take the nitroglycerin and get it into your blood system right then so that your arteries will open up. There's a word that they use for that. If you give them the extended release, it's not going to work as quickly. Okay, so if they're having a heart attack, if you give them the extended release, they could go ahead and have that heart attack. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're doing the right thing, giving the right thing. Now, the extended release is given when people have had heart attacks or they've got clogged arteries. Uh, maybe they're, like, I think my grandfather's was 75% clogged, and they wouldn't, of course, back then, they didn't do stents. Um, they did heart uh, open heart surgery, but they wouldn't do open heart surgery on an artery that was 75% blocked. It had to be 90 to 95%. So they would give him the natural glycerin tablets, So my grandmother took the natural glycerin patch, and uh, just make sure that the thing doesn't close up. And um, anyway, it kept the arteries more open all the time, so instead of opening it just once. And if you take the nitroglycerin and you're not having heart problems, or sometimes even when you take it and you are having heart problems, it will give you a headache, but that's because even the blood vessels in the brain are expanding. So that's my little knowledge of nitroglycerin. All right, I'm going to let you all try this one, number six. Chlorpropanamate, I don't know how to say that one. So this time we don't have as a label. We're just told what we have. And at one of your test questions, you'll see that. Since we were going, it's one tenth of a gram, and the, we have the hundred milligrams, then we have to convert it. One gram is a thousand milligrams. Grams was on top, so grams has to go on bottom. But I can cancel my grams, cancel my milligrams. I went ahead, I've got two zeros on bottom, so I went ahead and canceled two zeros on top. And then just did my 0 0.1 times my 10 because I'm putting less zeros in my calculator that way. It's easier to not make a mistake if you cancel the zeros. With all the canceling that I do, if you guys can just get in the habit of canceling zeros where you can, then you're a step ahead of a lot of people. Okay. Try number, uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll skip seven. Try number eight.
And again, it's milligrams. So if you want to put the, one two, the 0 0.125 and divide it by the 0 0.25 in your calculator, you're going to get the same answer. Okay. My question has always been, though, when I say it's okay, but what happens, you know, we had the tornado in Jonesboro last spring. It took out, well, y'all know, you live here, the mall, and it took out part of several neighborhoods. It took out a couple of things in Brooklyn. If that had just been a mile south, do you know what it would have took out? It would have took out the hospital. It would have took out St. Bernard's. You know, it's something to think about. And I mean, you know, you still have to do, you still have to do a lot of things. Still have to give some medications. Um, this is one of my, and I haven't even talked about this today, but this is where I get on one of my soapboxes when it comes to being able to do the math in your head. Um, some of y'all are not old enough to remember the tornado that took out Joplin, Missouri back in, I want to say 2010, but I'm not thinking it wasn't that far back. But it took out Mercy Hospital. That's what is now Mercy Hospital. It didn't level it, but it did level the ER. And what happened is they had an a EF4 tornado coming. And most of the times when you're coming into Joplin, it's, you're coming out of Oklahoma, and it's pretty flat land. And they said a lot of times these tornadoes would develop, and they'd come to the edge of town, and they would dissipate. They've had these warnings, EF4 tornadoes, EF3 tornadoes come and yell. So they didn't take it seriously. Of course, they did take their patients out into the hall. Yeah, you know, they did what they were supposed to do, but they weren't, you know, they've had this drill so many times. They treated it as a drill instead of treating it as something that's actually going to happen. Even people in, in the town of Joplin, it, hit, it took out one of the schools. They were having graduation. Parents heard the tornado warning. They, you know, they still went on to the high school to graduation. Um, several students were killed on their way to graduation. But several people in the hospital were killed also. But going back to my hospital story, there's a park on the, um, across the road from the hospital. There was people out playing in the hospital, uh, in the park. They took cover, but they were still injured. They said they had people walking into the Mercy Hospital emergency room. No power, no lights, no computers. They didn't know where their cell phones were. You know, they didn't know if they were in their pockets or what. Um, they didn't carry calculators on them, but they were doing triage in their ER at first. And they were shipping them, and then they had to ship them to the hospital across town. But all the patients and, and different people in the community were still bringing patients to Mercy Hospital because they didn't know that Mercy had been hit, and it was the closest one. So... What do you do if you're a nurse and you don't, you know, you're scatterbrained for one thing because you just got hit by a tornado. You don't know where your cell phone's at. You know, it's going to take things out of your pockets. It's going to take things out of your hand. These tornadoes have such a suction in them. So how are you going to calculate medications if you can't do it in your head and treat these patients? Because you've got to get pain meds. You still have access to pain meds, and some of these patients have got to have pain meds. Some of these patients have to have the natural glycerin because they're ha having a heart attack brought on by the, the um, tornado. So, I mean, you know, that's one thing to think about. When I first read it, I was still teaching at the high school, and one of my first thoughts was, what would I do? Because I was the senior class sponsor. I had graduation that year. What would I have done? had that been our town that had been hit. And I had my students there, you know, that's where my thoughts went at first. I started teaching this class. I'm like, I wonder what those nurses did and those doctors. You know, they did triage in the field. They gave pain medicines. They did tourniquets. Um, one, one guy, as they said, come in, he was holding his arm, and he says, I've been hit by something, and he had blood spurting out of his arm. It had nicked an artery. So, you know, and everybody has told me before, oh, you know, Jonesboro won't get hit. Jones Jonesboro was hit in 1974, I think it was, or 1960s. And it took out St. Bernard's. It hit St. Bernard's. So it can hit again. But that's something you all need to think about when you're learning to calculate these dosages. You've got to know how to do them in your head. Yeah. That's my soapbox, being able to do your math, being able to do the math in your head correctly. 
Yeah. I don't have to. Look, I mean, I can. But I teach it. All right, so we draw the half a tangent. Okay. Um, try number nine real quick. I think y'all could do that one in your head almost. If you had to do it in your head, could you do it in your head? So work it out on paper and see if you get the right answer. So I know it was going to be three. Y'all knew it was going to be three tablets, didn't you? Okay. All right. So come to a happier story. And Mrs. Michelle, you got a story go with everything. Well, oh, almost. All right. I had this awesome pediatrician when my kids were little. My kids were three years and ten days apart. My daughter was five. My son was three. No, he was two. Can't do this. Uh, but anyway, my daughter got chicken pox. Went to a, a well child checkup at the pediatrician's. And what do you catch when you go to a well child pickup or checkup? You catch chicken pox because they're well children. They're going to play in the toy area. Chicken pox is going around. This is spring. So uh, it was my son's well child uh, checkup. So I had him back in the uh, room, and my grandmother stayed with my daughter out in the play area. So she brought home chicken pox. Two weeks to the day that she broke out, my son broke out with chicken pox. So we had an awesome pediatrician. What she gave me to help my daughter with the chicken pox is because you really don't take much of anything. Calamine lotion, um, that type of thing. But I, she gave her something else. But she also gave me enough and told me the dosage to give my son because she knew if my daughter broke out, my son was going to break out. If my daughter had bronchitis, my son was going to get bronchitis. My son had walking pneumonia. He said 90% chance your daughter's going to have walking pneumonia. So she would always give me enough samples or write me a prescription to where I could have enough of the one medication to do both children. She was awesome like this. So we're going to pretend for a little while that y'all are working in a pediatrician's clinic, working for a pediatric doctor. And the doctor has ordered Cephalexor 100 milligrams. So they've probably got tonsillitis or strep throat or something. And you've got four different samples in the office to choose from. Patient's two years old. We'll go with that, okay? So have y'all ever tried to give a two-year-old medicine that doesn't like medicine? My son would take the medicine. My daughter, you had to straddle her. Clamper... <laughs> Clamp her head between your knees, open her, pry her mouth open, and stick. I had a little dropper or I had the uh, oil syringe and stick the medication in her cheek. And she would still try to spit it out. I had been spit on many a times. But she hated medicine. So keep this in mind that this child, you know, you want to see which strength is going to give me an amount that's going to be easy for the parent to give to the child. Okay, and you know this child's a fighter. So what we do is we're going to look at and we're going to calculate all four um, medications. Okay, you're in a clinic, you've got calculator usage, so it's not going to take you that long, I hope. So we're going to look at you know, oil suspension here. It's 125 milligrams per five milliliters. So the first one we're going to do, 125 milligrams for five milliliters. And we know our order is 100 milligrams. Okay. 
So I have got, I'm looking, no, it's oral suspension this time, so I'm looking for milliliters, which means that my form is going to be milliliters because it's a liquid. So my doctor's order, over one, my form, which is five milliliters, over my strength, which is 125 milligrams. My milligrams cancel. Okay, so we can work this two different ways. I can go 100 times 500, 100 times 5, and then divide it by 125. Or I can say, oh, hey, 25 goes into both of these. 25 goes into 125 five times. 25 goes into 100 four times. 4 times 5 is 20, divided by 5. That gives me 4 milliliters. Okay. How you get to 4 milliliters, that's up to you. Uh, you can do the 100 times the 5, that's 500. 500 divided by 125 is still 4 milliliters. Okay, so that's this first one. I'm given 4 milliliters. And then I'm going to look over here at this next one. That's 250 milligrams per 5 milliliters. Right. So we're going to do it the same way. 100 milligrams over one. My five milliliters over my 250 milligrams. All right, I'm going to do it this way this time. I've got a zero on bottom, a zero on top, so I'm going to cancel. 10 times 5 gives me 50. And over 25 which gives me two milliliters. All right, so I like the two milliliters up there. This is number two. So now we're going to look at number three. Number three is 187 milligrams per five milliliters. Still working it the same way. My milligrams are going to cancel. I can't see anything that cancels, so I'm doing 5 times 100, and I get 500 over 187. Then I'm going to dig out my phone because it's got my calculator on it. And I'm going to get 2.6737, blah, 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 blah. So that would round to 2.7 milliliters. Because I'm rounding it to the tenth, so I look at the seven, which makes that six go up to one, go up one. So number three was 2.7 milliliters. I'm almost out of room for number four. All right, so number four has 375 milligrams per five milliliters. So we're going to set it up, work it the same way. My milliliters over 375 milligrams. My milligrams are going to cancel. Again, I mean, I'll, 5 will go into 375, and 25 would go into 375, but that's a little harder than I want to do. So I'm going to do the 500 over the 375. And I get 1.3 repeating. Okay, so that's going to round to 1.3 milliliters. Now, I went pretty fast on that. On those, but was there any questions on any of those? Okay, so this is where you use your um, intuition, I guess. And by the time you go through the nursing program and you're working, you'll have a better idea of what's best. But we're just going to use our gut instincts here, okay? So what about four milliliters? That's less than a teaspoon, right? Would that most of the 
the teaspoons or the, the droppers that are used for children are two teaspoons, which are 10 milliliters. There's a five milliliter syringe, oral syringe, that we could use. So we could do four milliliters in either one of them, right? But that's still a lot of liquid for that child to spit back out on us. What about the 2.7 milliliters? Could we do 2.7? In the uh, oil syringe, it's marked off as 10, so we could do 2.7. But how hard would that be as a parent to measure out? Yeah, especially if this is your first child and you've had no experience with it. It's not all that easy to get seven tenths. Um, the same thing would be with 1.3, right? No, it wouldn't be all that easy to measure out. That's why I saved the two milliliters for last. Because this is, as a parent speaking from experience, two milliliters is easy to measure out. Two milliliters is easy to give a, a small child that fights some medication. Not enough liquid for them to spit it out at you. And if you give it slow enough, they're going to swallow it before they spill any of it out at you. So I would give... The 250, I would give the mother the 250 milligrams per 5 milliliters and tell her that she's got to give 2 milliliters per dose. Yeah, because you're going to tell her how much to give as well as um, decide which uh, medication to use, which strength. Also, this another thing this would really might be is if you're working on the pediatric floor of a hospital, you may have cephalexia in your cart, your medication cart, and you may have four different ones to give. Now, as a nurse, you could give the 1.3 or the 2.7 or the 2 or the 4. You know, it wouldn't be as hard for a nurse to give most of the time, especially if you've had plenty of practice. Okay. So, any questions? How do you all feel about this? As long as I don't ask you which one would you give, would you all be okay? If I just asked you how much you would give and gave you the medication that you're going to give. So I like doing um, number 12. Leaving me? All right, have fun. Be safe. Okay. If I don't, text me. All right. So y'all find the morphine that we're going to give. How much morphine are you going to give? And remember, again, this one's milliliters. You're giving it orally. Did we get 7.5? I think y'all got this. The, there is one thing I want to point out if you go ahead, because I have the solutions to this worksheet the, uh, where I worked them out back in the spring. 
So I'm going to have, those are already posted. I'm just going to open them. But on number 15, normally it's milligrams per milliliter. This one has to be, happens to be milligrams per teaspoon. Okay. But you're still going to work it the same way. You're going to, you know, you're still looking for one teaspoon. Your form is teaspoon. And your strength is the 6.25 milligrams. So nothing really changes except that you're using teaspoon instead of what we've been using. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get off of this for a minute. And then I'm going to look at this. All right. So as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and open that or publish it. All right. Homework, it's due October 8th, which is Thursday. Test 2 is going to open somewhere around midnight or just after midnight on Thursday, and it'll close at 11.59. You have 90 minutes. You have two attempts. Can we turn the base up? <laughs> Last semester, of course, I was in 217 last semester. With the, somebody did that same thing. at the It was at the beginning of class. Weird. Uh, so, but anyway, once you start the test, you have to finish the test. Unlike the homework, you can start the homework and then exit out of it. With the test, you've got to finish it because your time will keep going. Okay, so just make sure, make sure you work the homework. Uh, if you know you got the answer right, if you can do it in your head and it's two tablets, and you typed in two tablets, but it counted it wrong. It could be because of a space. It could be that you put your S on the end of it. But if you can look at it and know it has to be two tablets, but yet it marked me wrong, go ahead and know. I'll give you credit for it. As even if you put the S on the tablets, I'll still give it to you. Um, and just keep going. Don't worry about the fact that it's counting you wrong. But now, if you've got something that you can only, you know, you think you're right, but it counted it wrong, and you want to make sure you're right, send me an email, and I'll see what I can do about looking at it. But from 8 a.m. to 12 noon, I'm going to be in a conference workshop, whatever you want to call it, Thursday morning. I'll be on campus, but I'll still be in the conference. I'll be in, the, in my office on Teams or something. I don't know what we're doing. All right. So questions on the test. Is over just chapters 3 through 9? Make sure you've read three, three through nine before you do it. Make sure you know the six rights of medication and administration. The right patient, right medication, right dose, right route, right frequency, right documentation. Make, you know the, make sure you know the seven parts of a drug label. The uh, patient's name, the medication name, the dosage, the route, the frequency, and the federal frequency. Um, that was the other two. Date and time it was written and signature and licensure of the person that wrote it. So make sure you know those two things that list, three things that are listing. All right, that's about all the hints I can give you. It looks pretty similar to the homework. All right, have a good weekend. Unless you have questions.